All right, guys, Jack Spirico here with the Survival Podcast, and that's it, Nine Mile Farm. Morning tea. I'm out. It's about, I think it's about 50 degrees outside, but I'm in the greenhouse, and even though we haven't closed it all up properly this year, and, you know, by the time we do, we won't need to. I'll probably get that done by this weekend, actually. Um, but it's like 75, 76 degrees in here. It's a good 20 degree rise even with the doors not actually closed. Um, wanted to go over some things that we've had problems with this year since we didn't get the greenhouse closed and we didn't put any type of heating solution. We've had multiple bursted pipes during like some of the longest freezes that I've seen in, in Texas in, in living here uh, since 1993 when I first came. I'm talking like three, four days in a row with temperatures and lows in the low teens and highs only in the mid 20s and uh, that's just a lot to ask out of a system with this much exposed pipe we made some decisions one of the things we're going to do is uh, we're gonna put heat tape on the pipe it's a relatively small investment in return for protecting us it won't get used that much um, but you know I even like we had the stuff cut off right there I'll tell you about the other pipe in a second uh, and I had a heat light on on that and I figured, well, that'll keep us from freezing up. No, that froze, that broke. It caused all kinds of catastrophe down the line. We just uh, did some things to make that less likely, especially with light freezes, uh, you know, normal freezes for here. I don't think we would have to do anything anymore uh, when we get done with everything. But uh, we'll take you in there and see how the quail are doing in just a minute. Let's take a look over here, though. See what we got going on. One of the things we did that seemed like a good idea at the time was we put a one-way valve in so water can go this way but not this way um, in, in our system and of course this is where our pump sits this is our solid separator right here and um, over here is like our uh, our secondary fish tank this is the nice insulated one so we put our high value fish in here and our more hardy low value fish over here and uh, the idea was that this functions along with the solid separator is the fluctuation battery and then we can maintain a very high level over here and what happened was slowly over time this thing got worse and worse this this one-way valve and when we had our last freeze I think what it did is it froze shut it just won't open and so what was happening is the water was building up in here and overflowing so what David taught me is a little aquarium trick. And as much as I know about aquariums, I didn't know this one. We basically built these two-way siphons. And they're just real simple, fit together, PVC. And the, the downspouts are the same length. And all you do is fill them up with water in the tank and hold them upside down so they're completely full with your hands over and flip them around and stick them in. And what happens is when this side's higher, it creates a siphon that goes this way. When this side's higher, it creates a siphon that goes this way. And uh, when everything's equal, it just sits there. So with two of those in place, uh, we're able to run the, the spray bar nice and full. We're able to run our flood and drain at a nice pace. And uh, this is basically a get by because we didn't feel it was cold as hell. We didn't feel like actually taking that all apart and getting real wet. So this will get us by to be in a nice, really warm day to do this work and get that thing out of there because that thing's got to go. And we'll just and it'll basically do what it's doing now. It'll all stay as one big battery which I actually think is a, a better idea anyway so what's going on with that second pipe you can see that water coming out right there back in so what we've done is we have now two returns we have our main return in the bottom that's all the water that goes down through the system and flushes back out and, and just basically our passive drain back from our raft beds and things like that this other one is just basically a recirculation line to keep the water moving constantly that should help us with freeze so the way that works is it just basically follows the main delivery line all the way down here and it just basically returns it just creates a, a, a complete continuous return I asked David about leaving this like foot here foot and a half why not pop it here and he said basically when you do this you're gonna create a venturi and you're gonna get movement of water here uh, so that should all be good and well we still have plans to build the whole thing out our next phase is gonna be two more grow beds here and what we've decided is we're not in love with this double stack method we want to put two more flood and drains in the greenhouse so these two tanks are gonna get repurposed to flood and drain 
and they're going to become a deep water raft bed like this one is right here. So what we'll have then are three deep water rafts, and then the two new ones that we'll add, the two new racks that we add, we'll put in two more of these deep water wicking, or deep, I should call them deep wicking beds. So these guys are basically set up exactly like the raft beds, except they're set up as a wicking bed, right? So what I mean by that is if you could see under that dirt right there, much lower stand-up pipe, what you would see is actually this. You'd see the gravel that you could see down there at the bottom. You'd see one of these guys right here. It's covered over with uh, shade cloth, or not shade cloth, like weed blocker, and then the dirt's built up on top of it, and that water's doing the exact same thing in those wicking beds, and that's why they're like so much more powerful than your typical wicking beds where there's just a, a stagnant water there. They have actually water constantly pulsing through them just the way these do, and of course all of that uh, lava rock down there creating a filter. I'll see if I can get any of the fish on camera. There's some fishes. We actually have some fish in these uh, these deep water beds. And that's one of the reasons that we put them in so that we could uh, we could have additional additional fish in the system. And so when you think about it, these are 100 gallon tanks. Probably fill them to about uh, you know 80% capacity. So we have another 80, 80 you know 30, 320 gallons of water in the system when we put that last one in. Uh, quail are doing really good. We put in some lights on a timer. We also have LED lights under the racks. Um, I had some heat lamps in them. Uh, now that we're past these really cold spells, I was giving them a heat lamp at night so they could huddle up over there. They really didn't use it that much though, even with the really low temperatures. Uh, they'll get repurposed and I'll put the daylight bulbs in them. We'll have light all the way down to there and really uh, increase our egg laying. I think they're going through a like a molt right now because they're starting to fly again and they're going to need their wings clipped uh, pretty soon. We had, uh, unfortunately, one managed to fly into the deep water bed and drown itself the other day. The only upside, it was a male, so we didn't lose any eggs on that. So I think with the molting right now, you can see there's some feathers around here. Um, we're getting a few less eggs. We're, we're getting like 20 eggs a day where we usually get closer to 40. Uh, and I think it's about time to bring in some new genetics. You guys are going to get some friends. And once I know we're past the cold weather and the next uh, group of ducks are uh, up and going to the point where I don't have to take care of them every day and they're bonded with the flock, we'll go ahead and bring in uh, some, some more brown quail. I'll probably bring another uh, 80 in and I'll get about half of them will be girls and we'll toss them in here and maybe call some of the older girls and the rest will be males that will be meat for the freezer. On the ducks. So I think that's all I got to tell you about today. Of course, season two of the duck, season three of the Duck Chronicles. Oh yeah, I had my uh, intern put all this rock and gravel in here. We'll talk about another disaster, and then I'll tell you about the duck's future home. The uh, the next uh, season of the Duck Chronicles should begin around February the eighth. We have uh, 130 ducks coming, and uh, really ramping up the flock for going into next year. And we got a lot of old girls that are just not. Just not working out, you know, just not laying at the capacity that they did when they were younger. So we have to bring in new blood. That's just part of things. Those are pretty girls there, our Wells Harlequins. As you can see, my uh, aquatic system has shrunk in size temporarily. We uh, had a catastrophe with the return line blocking up. And, uh, of course, it's supposed to be discharging over there. And these three tanks acting as one. Another upgrade we're going to be doing, we're going to be putting in a two-inch return line from here to there. And a two inch return line down to there. Right now it's a three quarter inch line. That's gonna let us run this, this water, the speed of this water a lot faster. We'll be able to run the pump full out. We'll have no problems with uh, freezing up again. And because of how exposed this is, I'm gonna go ahead and put heat tape on these pipes as well. Rebuild the facade. When the facade gets rebuilt, it's gonna be higher than it was originally designed. So right now you can see the top of this is below the tank level. We'll rebuild it higher up so that it's above the tank level. And then David and I came up with this this weekend, kind of brainstorming. We are going to take at least one of these tanks and make a blue, uh, a bullhead catfish nirvana out of it. I'm going to uh, stop here and I'll piece this together for you because I'm going to go over 10 minutes. And it's gonna okay, guys and gals, back where we left off at. Um, so what we decided we wanted to do with this is actually get more water capacity in it. I had them filled with all that rock to create a, a filter system and it was kind of working. Uh, but it's not really necessary here. I'm going to put a, a, a circulation filter on this side. It basically, water comes in the bottom and comes up through a biofilter and discharges. And we'll be, like I said, we'll be running that pump full out because of the bigger return lines. 
so we don't really need it in here and those tanks have run for three years without it just fine so our thought is at least one of these maybe two maybe all three are going to become uh grow out beds and uh spawning beds for bullhead catfish and uh because of a new way i've learned to clean bullhead catfish in about honest to god 20 seconds per catfish um i'm more excited than ever about using them as a food source and they're locally available we can catch them we can put them in our own systems we don't have to buy fish they love to eat minnows well down in my pond down there i have about a gazillion minnows literally uh all summer long we can walk across the pond on them so i can have bullhead cats up here go down there once or twice a week dump in a big bucket full of minnows never run out of them feed my catfish and uh, harvest them as we want to right here out of these tanks so what we wanted to do since we were taking away all that gravel is come up with like a really cool way to create habitat in here and have deep water and shallow water so what we're going to do we take one of these this is a 14 gallon um concrete mixing tray they sell for about 15 bucks at, at home depot and Lowe's. that sits in there like that we're filling about a third of the way with substrate and i haven't decided i'm gonna do sand or mud yet i might do sand because they should probably use the sand as though it were mud and then we take these guys have cinder blocks put one with the hole this way and one with the hole that way so now we've got different ways of, now they got all kinds of little habitat to hang out in down there and we take one of the seven gallon tanks we set it like that okay we fill that with substrate and plant emergent vegetation in it like pickerel rush well, look what you got there just a apartment complex for bullheads you've got shallow water you got deep water you do all of that with very affordable stuff and you drop something like bullheads in there you really got something so that's how this system's going to get rebuilt i'm thinking about making the investment and replacing this tank i used it because i had it but if you notice even though they're the same size tanks this one's more narrow and it stands a little taller they do that so they can ship two in the space of one i could probably find another home for this tank and go ahead and pick one of these up i think they're only about 150 bucks uh, they hold 170 gallons of water a piece so that's a lot of water on there and again with that high high capacity return line we're going to be able to run that pump you know come down here where it's just recirculating we'll be able to run at that kind of velocity upstream and uh that should just take care of any problems we ever have with water freezing up with that kind of movement uh that two tank system has never frozen up in three years all right what the heck is that with all the outbuildings you had you think i'd be done well we decided that we wanted uh, a shed to keep some other things in but mostly all the stuff we use for our uh, workshops just so it was all out of the way because as much room as i have in that big workshop I, I never can get organized because I have so much stuff that's dedicated just to the events that's used like two or three times a year. So we picked this up. We got this thing, 10 by 16 at Lowe's, installed, installed for uh, $3,400. So all the wife's Christmas decorations and, and, and Thanksgiving and holiday stuff can go up there. And then, you know, this is plenty of room for all of the event stuff. But what's going to happen, we would never do this just as a duck brooder, but since we have 130 ducks coming, what a great way to brood. So we'll just completely cover this floor in uh, straw, and we'll do a deep litter with them for a few weeks in here. We can heat it, we can keep them warm, they can have plenty of room to run around. I'll set up a drain system like I do for their water, uh, but out here they'll be able to have like two five-gallon buckets of water, so they'll have to water them once a day. And I'll just take and close one of the doors and, and staple a piece of hardware cloth to keep them in so the door can be open during the day. And I have a little uh, one mile fence charger. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put a second uh, thing of the hardware cloth on the outside and ground it and uh, hook that little fence charger up to it. It won't hurt you real bad, but it's uncomfortable. And that'll keep the cats out of here while the ducks are really little. Other news, the gooses are laying. We've gotten, I think, eight or 10, uh, goose eggs so far this year and uh, they're rocking on with it and starting to get a little aggressive and protective but they haven't really nested in a single spot yet but uh, we are getting goose eggs Dorothy's saving them for select customers and otherwise things are looking up it's been pretty tough around here lately with the cold weather and the rain and the ice and everything else but uh, as you can see today's a beautiful day and even though it's not a Duck Chronicles we'll uh man look at that 
that is a mulberry I planted last year, a dwarf mulberry that I planted from a cutting last year. That's going to produce a lot of fruit, so it's to bud out already. But uh, got lazy today, didn't want to fill their pool, so I just turned the hose on in the swale. This is the smallest swale, so it only takes about an hour to do that. And uh, they've got their lazy river action going on today, don't you girls? Anyway, hope you enjoyed the update. We will have a lot more coming for you in the coming weeks. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.